God bless you, beloved, and welcome to Artist in Focus. Today we have a very special guest. Her name is Jo Camille, our next worshiper who will be singing on Fullness of Worship next week. We wanted to give you the opportunity to meet Jo. She's one of the most beautiful Christians I have ever met. She's so precious and I'm sure you will see that too as we get to know her better. Beloved, I believe that her testimony is not only going to encourage the weak, but is also going to encourage others who've gone through some of the same struggles. Well, Joe, welcome to Artist in Focus. Thank you, Janine. It is such a blessing. It's been such a blessing to work with you. These uh, different sessions we've had, recording and taping your worship. It's been a joy to work with you, and you are a real princess. <laughs> it's so true. You are a real princess, and you're just as beautiful inside as you are outside. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I really mean it. <laughs> Beloved, tell everyone how you came to know the Lord, first of all. Um, I encountered the Lord when I was in second year college, around like I was 19 or 20 years old. And now how old are you? I'm 31. 31. So that was almost 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, Here's what I um, learned about the Lord. One of the things that I learned about the Lord is that when He encounters you, He, en he encounters you just like as who you are. It's like He communicates with you and and how you created you to be. Because like the way that the Lord spoke to me, He spoke it through what I really love doing. It's like ever since when I was a kid, I I really love the performing arts. And so when I was young, when my mom would like teach me some drama piece or some poem, or, like my dad would teach me dancing or like um, learning songs. And then when I was young, I was really confident with myself. And then. Um, I would go to school and I would suddenly tell my teacher like I have this poem like I have a drama or something like that and then I would tell her and then she would tell me like do you want to present it in, in front of class and I said yes and then like we're just doing something like our teacher would tell us like to like write something or like an activity in class and then suddenly she would like let everybody stop what they're doing <laughs> and then and she gets their attention so that i could like perform yeah. and then i just do it and then after that i just go back to my seat oh that is <laughs> that is so precious <laughs> <laughs> when i remember it it's like what I did it when I was young yeah. so it's like it's part of my memory that I have forgotten and then it's just like I, I just recalled it recently because like when I'm I was a teenager it was like it, it's like as I was growing older from like very young and I started to understand the things around me I think I was eight year eight years old that like I started to understand what's going on with my family mm -hmm. and then I realized that my mom and dad it's like our family is just chaotic oh. my mom and dad would be fighting every day it's like would wake up our dishes were all broken that's a very difficult environment to be in and it also fractures you emotionally yeah it really yeah. does affect you does it? yeah and then when I was in high school, um, we moved here. And then that's the most difficult time in my life, in my experience. Also for the whole family, but it's like, but it's like I have my own experience and how I go through it. And when I was, when I was in that age, it's like you're more sensitive because you're starting to understand more things around you. Yeah, that's right. In that moment where 
I encountered the Lord because like what's happening in my family growing up it's like it's built in me because like what you'd always hear are like unloving things unloving words you'd always hear like you're a burden or like you're worthless and those kind of things when you make mistakes or or like just just go away just leave this house like those kind of things and it's like you're to me i was looking for love i just wanted i I was looking for love and it's like there would be for a lot of times i would be at school and then i would just walk because like i separated myself from people because like i had when we moved here i also had bad experiences with the school i transferred to so it's like i i got like bullied and it's like i didn't want to go to school anymore but when i'm at home i don't have anybody to talk to to so it's like growing up i just like wanted to die you know i can understand that that's a an an environment of extreme rejection and especially from the family unit when your validation has to come from your mother and your father that's very emotionally damaging how did you come to know Jesus? And so, like, I was walking uh, pathway in school at school, and then I most of the times I would just ponder like with life. And then I'm usually just alone, it's like I separate myself from people. And then I was in the library, and I, I usually read bulletins, and then I saw a post there like. There's a fellowship inviting everybody for um, beginning of the Sam fellowship, and like, I keep on wondering what what's a fellowship because my parents or my family is Catholic, so it's like I'd hear it from my classmates because most some of them are Protestants, so I, I wonder what's that, and so I said like maybe I should go, and then. When I went to the venue, the day came, and when I went to the venue, they would be starting seven o'clock, and then the the pu- public transport that I need to ride to going home um, is only an, up until eight o'clock. So if I'd go to that event, I would have a problem going home. Getting home, yes. So it was in the second floor, and. I prayed because like, I was like hesitant whether should I go or not because I would be having a problem going home. And then I said, I prayed before I entered the building. I said, like, Lord, it, this is worth it that I go here. Um, give something to me. It's like s- speak to me or whatever. And find a way, like help me get a ride back home. That's a good prayer. <laughs> Yeah, and then so I went there, and then everybody was very excited, and I was like, oh, I don't have friends. I don't know anybody there. It's like most of them knows everybody. It's like it's a student group, Christian group. And then I was stalling at one of the tables and just looking at them, and I said, like, should I go or not? Should I go or not? So I was talking to myself, and then I said, like, it's like for a long time like minutes and then I said like I'm already here so I should just go so I mustered myself up and went to the like registration and I said like um can I still join then and then they said yes and then who who invited you it's like three of the people there said asked me who invited me and I said like and in my mind I said like oh you should be invited before you come to this gathering <laughs> I didn't know that so I said no I just saw an announcement and then what happened so I so they're they're in the other row I'm in here because most of them are friends and I was sitting at the second line and then the first thing that they, they did was a prayer and then they did a skit the skit okay. has no words in it the people four people doing it are just doing movement like a mine it was a mine yes mm-hmm. and then there's some music what they did was there's Jesus and then there's this lady 
And then there's two other people here. And these two people are representing the world. And the lady in the middle was the person. And you know what happened? Every bit of the movement, Jesus spoke, just spoke to me there. And then all the things that they did in this kit, it's like Jesus was speaking to Thank me. You, Jesus. And then he just said, I cannot forget. He keeps on saying, this is how much I love you. This is how much I care for you. I care for you so much. And it's like... Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The whole time, even from the beginning of the movement... The Lord spoke to me, and I was already crying, like crying really hard. And like I was just holding myself because there's other people, but I was trying not to sob because it's like the feeling of, you know, that you are loved, that somebody actually sees you, that somebody actually loves yes, you and yes. cares about you. I always question myself whether if I'd be gone, would somebody look for right. me? And so he was letting you know that he was there all the time. He, yeah. He saw you. Yeah. He knew what you were going through. And he was there to help you. Yeah. And it's like, when I recall it, it's like, it's just so amazing. Oh, so mind-blowing. How could God speak to me? with just movements and it's like Amazing. every detail of the movement of the skit God was speaking to me and it's like the Lord is just so amazing it's like wow. he created me this way mm -hmm. and he encounters me in how he made me it's like how I, I am in the way he made me and he encountered me in that way you know that just is a, a good testimony of how great God is, Joe, to be able to communicate to every person who doesn't know him that he's alive, that he's real, and that he loves them, that we should not underestimate God's ability to reach people, even in the darkest of situations, that he is able to communicate his love to them. You know, I've often wondered, how does God communicate to the Buddhist or to someone in a Muslim family? You understand? Or people who've never had any exposure to Christianity. How is he able to relate that he is God, but he is God, and he, he's able to do it? And I think your testimony is, a, is an excellent example of how God is able to communicate with us because he's, he, he's our creator. And yeah. I believe that he's echoing his love to each and every person, how much he loves them. So what happened? You gave your life to Jesus, didn't you? People, the ones organizing the event, like, saw me. Okay. And then um, I think we prayed a prayer after that. But um, what I could remember is that they contacted me and they had me like a, like a beginner's Bible class so that you'd understand why do you believe in Jesus? Yes. yes. Why those kind of things so that you'd understand what is believing in Jesus is all about. And then, so they followed me up and then it's, I just grew from there. Praise God. And then, one thing that happened so the lord answered all of my all of my prayers before i went up to the building so i my problem now cuz like it ended 9:30 in the evening so i don't have a ride anymore what happened was one of the elders in the group offered the ride to me <laughs> praise the lord thank I you jesus i think two people offered <laughs> yeah. a ride to me and that was not an insignificant miracle that was a great miracle because yeah. you needed a way home and you had put that fleece out you know yeah praise god the lord is so amazing in the many different ways he he helps us from day to day and i think that's a wonderful testimony and so realistic 
you know, of problems that other people have when they when they need to get somewhere, that God is able to do that. Wow. Well, Camille, when did you start writing songs? I can't really remember, but it's like it's natural to me that when I'm like talking to the Lord, like communing with the Lord, or like reading the Word. Or praying, or when I worship, like sing songs to him, and especially when I sing songs to him, like when I worship him, and I'm just in that mode where all like your surroundings just filled with the presence of the Lord, and it feels like it's only you and God yes. in that room, and nothing else matters. It's just. I don't know, it's like an overflow of melody. And I just like go on and sing it to the Lord. And just sing it. It's like in one sitting, I could sing like seven songs, different melodies to the Lord. That is so beautiful. Well, beloved, Camille has written a song. And the name of the song is When I See You. And in this song, just the theme of it, you'll hear it in a few days. But the theme is what will I do when I see you Jesus face to face and you know when I first heard you sing this song Joe I said oh Lord this song came right from heaven these are Jesus words they're so beautiful and they're so they so communicate the idea of the ecstasy we'll have when we see Jesus and I never thought of what will we do when we see him, but these words are so descriptive of, it's like you're there and you're wondering, you know, what what am I going to say when I see him face to face, you know? (laughs) It's kind of like a blind date, you know? You're waiting to see this guy, you've heard so much about him, and now it's time to see him. What am I going to say when when I see this guy? Just really Holy Spirit-inspired words. There's an anointing on this song that when I heard this song played, I've been singing it every night. We've been singing it constantly because it's, the song is anointed and it's from heaven and it awakens your love for God and it awakens your expectancy to see him. And I believe people around the world who are going to hear this song, they're going to be singing in the middle of the night and this song is called to prepare the bride for their bridegroom. And he's coming so soon. And beloved, we don't know if we're going to make it past May, the way things are going now in today's world. But if we don't, this song is there to usher us into his presence. You know, it's so beautiful. And we cannot wait until a few days from now till we are able to let you hear Camille's song. And I'm sure it's going to be such a blessing to you as well. Thank you, Janine. I it's like whenever songs would just come out, I always like it's it's always the Lord. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't have it if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. It's like when you're communing with the Lord, He gives you so much blessing that's mm-hmm. coming from Him, and it just goes out from Him into your heart. Yes, and you put it out there and it's because of the Holy Spirit that's right well you know Camille in our walk with the Lord we're in a process he's changing us from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord and there's a process of sanctification and there's a process where he's making us the weak strong right and bringing us through trials and tribulations so it's a it's a constant walk we're not perfect overnight we're perfect in his sight but we still have to overcome right and um, when I talked to you last you've had some struggles even now that you're a Christian you've had some struggles emotionally you've had some struggles with fear how the enemies tried to condemn you with fear and inferiority especially with this gift It seems that, beloved, when we are gifted and when God has put an anointing on your life, that's somehow when the enemy will attack you more. But it's not because there's anything wrong with you. It's because you're so great in his kingdom and he's trying to hinder God's process in your life. And so you've been going through those struggles. And I wanted to ask you, because I believe your testimony is going to encourage others, what are some of the things that the enemy has done in the area of fear, 
feeling like you're inferior or you're not you're not good enough to do something I know he's hit you with those things you know um, other people are mu much better than you. you you're not able to do it you know you're shy you know you need to hide in a corner what are some of the lies that he's told you I think it's because growing up I'd hear negative things from my mm -hmm. especially from my dad it's like between my mom and dad, I really wanted my dad's approval. And whatever he says really affects me. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm not good enough. Like, I always doubt myself. It's like I have a low self-esteem. And then when I finished college, I really wanted to, like, if I could do, like, serve full-time in the ministry or for whatever what for whatever or wherever the Lord would put me and then there was an addition at church for opening for like um, for the praise and worship team and then I auditioned so I got it after audition but every time I'm on stage so the first thing I sing in Thursdays like twice a month and then later on, we moved to um, Sundays. I have two Thursdays and one Sunday. Yeah, now you month. go to Calvary Church here in Dumaguete, Philippines. Yeah, I you do. have a wonderful pastor, Pastor Jojo. We just love Pastor Jojo. And you're on the worship team there. Yeah. yeah. He's really good in um, teaching mm -hmm. the word. Mm -hmm. But every time I'm on stage, I always fight with myself. Mm -hmm. It's like I fight that I might make mistakes. I'm not good enough. It's like, do I deserve to be here? Right. Now, so if you don't mind, just to share with the audience just a little something because it's going to so encourage others. Um, I'm interrupting because you've had a breakthrough, a tremendous breakthrough. And so Camille came and we started working with her in this inferiority had hit in, you know, when we were telling you how wonderful the song was, and she didn't feel like she could play the song herself with excellence the way she needed to play it. And you struggled, and you struggled singing and playing at the same time. And the Lord kept telling me, but Camille is supposed to, to be the next singer for fullness of worship. <laughs> and you'd be like, but I, I can't, you know. <laughs> and so anyway, we're so proud of you. We're so thankful that you pressed through all that rejection, all those that condemnation from the enemy, and you came on. We switched the song to someone else playing the song for you, and the anointing wasn't the same. And when you heard that, that the anointing wasn't the same, you finally said, oh my goodness, I, I need to play it myself. <laughs> Do you know, it, there was a process here where you had to hear someone else play it and recognize, wait a minute, but they're not me. And you know what, beloved? God has made us all different, all individual. None of us have the same fingerprint. And you have an anointing from God, and you're unique, and you're special. No one can take your place. And that's how God communicated to you that you were special, that you were unique, that you had to play the song because it had to be with the gentleness that you bring to the song, right? I didn't really realize that that until you said it, that everybody has different anointings. Mm -hmm. And then when I got home, when you said that, and I said, oh yeah, right, We're, everybody's different. And like different for everybody and unique for how God made them. And then I said like, I think it's the words, because like words are very powerful, yes. just like what it said in Psalms where death and life is in the power of the tongue, tongue. and your team has been very helpful to me, how you were so encouraging and how you just let me be myself and how you just say kind words to me and it just built in me. and. I see those things as the kindness of God through you and I was able to make it through because you were there supporting me too. So, and then, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what we're here for. We're the family of God, and the Bible says we're to encourage one another, amen, and strengthen one another and edify each other. So it's our joy, yeah, to, and to see the outcome of what the Lord has done. One more question, beloved. You know, there. I'm thinking of other people who are looking at us today, who are watching this program today, who say, that's me. What Joe Camille has gone through, that's what I go through. I go through the same struggles. Joe, what would you say to these people to encourage them? The enemy could tell you lies because his ultimate goal to separate you from the Lord the enemy destroys what the Lord loves. The enemy is like so opposite of the character of God. He is not our friend. Never. The only thing he wants is to destroy us. Mm -hmm. And when we are separated from the Lord, he knows that when we're separated from him, we will be destroyed. And that's what he wanted. And he speaks lies and lies and lies. And if you're, if you're not, it's very important that you spend your time in the Word, knowing God, knowing about God, but knowing God especially, spending time Amen. in prayer and worship in the Word, because the Word of God is the truth. When you like put yourself into like you read the word and you study it and you spend time knowing the Lord and this is one thing this is very important what is written in the Bible is the truth there's so many voices around us so many people telling us this is what's right this is what's right this is what you should do this is what you should not do but the ultimate um, authority and the ultimate truth is the word of God so whatever you hear around you what people say or what the enemy the lies of the enemy tells you you always go back to the word and whenever you hear these things, you have to like compare it. Is it the truth? Right. Because truth isn't the word. It is the truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the word. Amen. You always go back to the word yes. and believe in it. That's the key. Believing. You have to believe it. And you know what that reminds me of the scripture that says... You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Thank you so much, Joe Camille. Thank you for sharing your struggles, your victories, your testimony. And I know today many other people have been encouraged. You don't want to miss next week when we premiere Joe Camille's new original song, when I see you. Well, beloved, thank you for joining us. God bless you and shalom.